Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be continuing on with my mini admin course series. Today we're going to be diving into company settings, which is in the first section of the um, admin study guide around the organization setup. It's around 3%, so it is good to review this and know this, but it's not super crucial to really in-depth study it. So let's go ahead and jump into our company settings. I'm starting off in setup and in the quick find, I'm typing in company settings or just company will help bring it up. There are a few different important parts of company settings and we'll go over those. Let's start in business hours. All right, business hours, this helps your organization um, restrict processes to when your business is only open. So say you had a service team and they only worked Monday through Friday, nine to five. This would restrict any escalation rules from only running during business hours. So they wouldn't run on a Saturday or a Sunday. You can set up your custom business hours to have a name, if it's active or not, which time zone are you in, and then the actual hours. Currently, this is set to 24 hours. You can also set this as the default, but it's just good to have this and know what it is and how to set this up. All right, let's jump into company information. This is all about your company. So you have your name, your primary contact for Salesforce. When your fiscal year starts, your address, you have your currency, your time zone, a lot of really awesome stuff. You can see that this is currently a developer org. You could have professional, you could have um, enterprise, all those kinds of things. This is also where you can see your user licenses and how many are being used, how many total do you have, and if they're active or not. Scrolling down, you can see you have permission set licenses. So you have CM CRM user, different field services, etc. You can also see the, the feature licenses that you have. You have their status, total, and how many are used and how many are remaining. You also have usage based entitlements. All right, let's go ahead and go down to fiscal year. The fiscal year helps you forecast and understand when you are, or helps you in reporting, and also to know how much your pipeline is doing and how well your pipeline is doing. You can, they have, a, so stand, there's a difference between the standard fiscal year and the custom fiscal year. The standard year is just your standard calendar year where you have 12 months in a year. You can start it at any month in the year. And you can also start it at the beginning of the month or at the end of the month. The standard fiscal year has a lot more reporting capability than the custom fiscal year does. So the custom fiscal year is enabled and you can start it at any point if you have different weird quarters, anything that's not in a 12 month year, but most companies will use the 12 month year. When you enable these custom fiscal years, this cannot be undone and you'll lose a lot of standard um, functionality that comes with the fiscal years like reporting, different quotas, and forecasts. You'll need to do that all on your own rather than using the standard functionality. Let's go ahead and move on to holidays. So holidays are any time that your business hours are not running. So you can set it for Christmas or for the 4th of July or Canada Day, depending on what country you're in. It's just when your team is not available. So it'll act like business hours or off business hours and your processes won't include that day if you have a time-based process. So any escalation rules, stuff like that won't run on this day. 
let's go ahead and move on to language settings. Here, you're able to um, choose your default language and also change to what languages you allow your users to change their default language to. So some users you might have in other countries like in Japan, or you might have users in a Spanish speaking country. Most companies will use English and everything out of the box Salesforce will usually be in English. Something that you do need to be aware of is if, so say you have two languages in content or content articles or knowledge articles. So you have, let's say English and you have Spanish. You're gonna to wanna to download, if you change your default language to Spanish from English, you're gonna to want to take all of your knowledge articles and download them and then re-upload them in the language that you do want them in as an end result, just so that way they don't get translated in the process. A lot of, if you do decide to change your default language, you will need to translate some of the custom labels that you do have in Salesforce. This can be done through a similar tool to the data import wizard, but for languages. Let's go ahead and go to my domain. My domain changes the login of your Salesforce. Up here you can see that I have just a kind of random uh, name up here for my Salesforce org because it is a developer org. What you can do is change this to be the name of your business and it's highly recommended that you do this. Some of the cool settings that you can use is you can prevent users from logging in on login.salesforce.com and you can have them log in from your company name or your mydomain.salesforce.com or you can have them be able to do both. You can also have authentic authentication configuration that helps you have more security around logging in with your domain. All right, that's it for company settings. Again, this is 3% on the admin exam. I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time around this section, but it's good to review it and have it in the back of your brain. Thank you for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. Drop down in the comments if you have any questions regarding this video or other videos you'd like to see. And I will catch you guys in the